Hi Great Saints, this is Miss Bresler and I will be looking at the basics of trigonometry with you as well as trig ratios. So you've done an investigation, so hopefully you won't be too confused when I'm talking about all these things. So firstly what you need to know is that trigonometry is about the measurement of triangles. Also it's about the relationship between sides and angles in triangles and we can indicate these angles using Greek letters like theta or beta or alpha and we can even use normal letters in the alphabet like a or x or m and we also use right angle triangles so it's very important to know that and we will be using Pythagoras so like from grade 8 to work out missing sides okay so to work out these missing sides we need to use Pythagoras and I'm just going to remind you again how that works we all know that it's the hypotenuse squared equals to the one side squared plus the other side squared so in this case we have c squared equals to a squared plus b squared. I can then manipulate this formula to make one of the other sides the subject if I wanted to work one out one of the other sides. So then I'll have something like a squared equals to c squared minus b squared or even b squared equals to c squared minus a squared. Now I can use these formulas over here and I can substitute values. And once I substitute values, I can then work out the missing side that I want to work with. So another thing to then remember is you always need to work from your reference angle. So your reference angle will be either your theta or your beta or your alpha. And your opposite and your adjacent sides will depend on where your reference angle is actually situated inside the triangle. So let's have a look at these two examples over here. We know that the hypotenuse is right across from the 90 degree angle, so I'm just going to do that. Even with the second triangle over here, it's right across from the 90 degree angle. So now, look from the viewpoint of your reference angle. So if you were to stand on this reference angle, and you look right opposite from this reference angle, the side that you're going to hit, that will be your opposite one, because it's opposite your reference angle. So for this triangle, that's your opposite side. For the next triangle, that's your reference angle. So pretending that you're standing on this reference angle, looking right opposite from it, right across from it, the opposite side that you hit is then the opposite side. And then obviously the last one that's left is your adjacent side. So once you've figured out what your hypotenuse and your opposite is, you actually do have your adjacent sides as the last little option left. But it's also the side that touches your angle. So that's the side that touches your angle. I know that the hypotenuse also touches it, but this is why we start with figuring out where the hypotenuse is. So it kind of helps you to eliminate the options that you have. Okay, so let's look at a few examples over here, just to make sure that we get this, because the triangles will be moving around and the reference angles will sit in different places. So the first thing to remember is maybe just get your hypotenuse side first. And then we can work from our reference angle. So hypotenuse side is right across from our 90 degree angle. There that is. Then I can look from my reference angle. I've even highlighted it. So right opposite my reference angle is my opposite side. And then the only one that's left is my adjacent. Okay, so that was the first one. For the second one, let's again start with my hypotenuse first. So right across from my 90 degree angle, there's my hypotenuse. Then right opposite my reference angle is my opposite side. And then the only one that's left is my adjacent side. Okay, so let's look at the third one. So again, starting with your 90 degree angle, right across from your 90 degree angle is your hypotenuse. And then from your beta, so from your reference angle, right opposite your reference angle is your opposite side. And the only one that's left is your adjacent side. Okay, two more examples. So again, we start with the hypotenuse. Right across from my 90 degree angle is my hypotenuse. Then looking from my reference angle, right opposite my reference angle is my opposite side. And then the only one that's left is my adjacent side. Okay, and then the last one right across from my 90 degree angle there's my hypotenuse looking from my reference angle right opposite my reference angle is my opposite side and then the only one that's left 
is my adjacent side. Okay, so now we're going to start with trig ratios. We have three special ratios, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent ratios. We'll just call them sine, cos, and tan because it's much easier. And just a few things to remember again, triangles are similar when their corresponding angles are equal and their corresponding sides are in proportion. So if you have two or three or four triangles and you want to know if they are similar, they will be similar as long as their corresponding angles are equal and their corresponding sides are in proportion. So if you wanted to see how these ratios actually came about and why we have specific ratios and why sine is opposite over hypotenuse and why cos is this and that, you more than welcome to go have a look on page 63. It gives proofs and also very nice examples on why it's that way. So let's have a look at your ratios then. So sine of an angle, I chose theta. So sine of theta, so sine of any angle, is always equal to your opposite side over your hypotenuse side. So O over H. Cos of theta is always equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so A over H. And tan of theta is always equal to opposite over adjacent, so O over A. So if you can remember these three ratios, you can just go read off whatever their values are and you can put them in a fraction and then you'll have the sine of something, the cos of something and the tan of something. So we actually do have some ways to remember these. So um, two little rhymes. The first one is silly old hens cackle and hickle till old age. So the way it works is the S for silly is for sine and the old hens, the O and H is opposite over hypotenuse. And then the cackle and hickle, the C is for cos and then the A and the H is for adjacent over hypotenuse. And then the till old age, the T is for tan, and the O and the A is for opposite over adjacent. Okay, and then we have a second little example that you can use to remember these trig ratios. And you're more than welcome to go look right at the end of your notes. I've put a silly little story there to show you where this name came from. And this is how this one works, Sokotoa. So the S is for sine. And the O and the H is for opposite over hypotenuse. The C is for cos. And the A and the H is for adjacent over hypotenuse. The T is for tan. And the O and the A is for opposite over adjacent. Now that you kind of know the basics, let's have a look at an example so that we know what they're actually going to ask us and what I need to do. So look at my side note over there. It says, remember to work out the missing side using Pythagoras. You will see that the side D is completely missing, so we need to work it out using Pythagoras because we might actually need it later. Also, we need to remember to convert our units so that they are the same. I can't work with two different types of units. They need to be the same. So here we have 100 meters and 24 centimeters, so we need to make them the same in order for us to work with them. So let's do that. Let's first say that 100 meters is actually equal to centimeters. So that is my value for E. So actually, I would like to take away this 100 meters and just write down that it's 10 centimeters. Then let's work out the value for D, so the length of D. Now D is actually the hypotenuse, so it's my normal Pythagoras formula of hypotenuse squared is equal to the one side squared plus the other side squared. So D squared is equal to F squared plus E squared. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the values that I have. So d squared is equal to 24 squared plus 10 squared. If I work that out, d squared is actually equal to 676. And if I get the square root of both of those sides to solve for d only, I will see that the square root of 676 is actually 26. So d is 26 centimeters somewhere on the side. I'm just going to write down that I use Pythagoras. So Right on top of the D over here, I'm going to write down 26 centimeters so I can use it later. Now, one more thing that you need to keep in mind is the fact that you actually kind of have two triangles in one because you have two reference angles. And what I mean by this is your opposite and your adjacent sides will sit in different places because you have different reference angles. So the theta is red and the beta is green. So what I've done is I've kind of redrawn this as two triangles. So if you want to think about it this way, it's kind of like this red one is on top of that green one. 
So I just split them up so it's easier to, to look at them. So looking from the theta, let's first work out the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is always across from my 90 degree angle. And this is for both my triangles. So the hypotenuse always stays on the same place. That's quite nice. But then looking from your reference angle theta, opposite that is where your opposite side will lie. But if you look from your beta, the opposite side is actually this side over here. And then the adjacent one is the only one that's left. So just remember when they start asking us questions and they refer to a specific reference angle, we need to make sure we don't mess up where the opposite and where the adjacent is. So let's then look at some examples. So for the examples, they will actually say something like, oh, what's the value for D? Now we all just worked that out. So D is 26 centimeters because we use Pythagoras. And then I actually put them in two different colors. So the red one is for the theta and then the green one is for the beta. So it's just easier to, to kind of look at them. So sine of theta, we all know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So from the sine of theta, so looking at this triangle over here, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. This is your opposite and this is your hypotenuse. So your opposite is 10 centimeters and your hypotenuse is 26 centimeters. So it's 10 centimeters over 26 centimeters and I can just simplify that a bit to 5 over 13. Then cos of theta. We know that cos has a ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse, again it's the red one. So adjacent is over here and your hypotenuse is over there. So the adjacent is 24 and your hypotenuse is 26. So your adjacent is 24 and your hypotenuse is 26. Again, you can simplify this a bit to 12 over 13. Then tan of theta. So I'm going to again look at my red triangle from the theta reference angle. We know that tan is opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent. So again to the big triangle. Your opposite is 10 and your adjacent is 24. So we have 10 over 24. And we can simplify that a bit to 5 over 12. So that was for the red triangle. So let's now have a look at the green triangle. The green triangle with the reference angle of beta, everything is now in different places. So all sides are now not where the red one's sides were. So sine of beta. So sine, again, we know it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. So here's your opposite and there's your hypotenuse. So your opposite is 24 and your hypotenuse is 26. So I have 24 over 26. And then I can simplify this again to 12 over 13. Then cos of beta. So again, looking at your green triangle from the reference angle of beta, cos of beta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So there's your adjacent and there's your hypotenuse. So the adjacent is 10 and your hypotenuse is 26. So it's 10 over 26. So 10 over 26 and I can simplify that to 5 over 13. Then tan of beta, so again your green triangle. Tan of beta, we all know that tan is opposite over adjacent. So there's your opposite, here's your adjacent. So for the triangle, your opposite is 24 and your adjacent is 10. So we have 24 over 10 and we can simplify that a bit to 12 over 5. So hopefully this makes a bit more sense now. It's very important to just know which reference angle you're looking at and that reference angle will tell you what side is your hypotenuse, what side is your adjacent, what side is your opposite, and that will make all the difference. So you need to know what your ratios are, and you need to know that you're looking from a specific reference angle, and that specific reference angle is going to be the specific opposite side or specific adjacent side that you need to use. So exercise one on page 66, you can do A, you can do B, maybe C, D, and E. You can try F if you want to, um, but 
these ones are the basic ones to look at seems like a lot but it's quite straightforward just asking you to recognize which ones are opposites and just to also write down your ratios with the values of the ratios so i hope this clarified a few other things and i hope that you understand the first steps of trig a bit more